the Old Testament lesson for this, the first Sunday in Advent, is written in the second chapter of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law and the word of the law from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The epistle lesson is written in the 13th chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning at the 11th verse. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what the prophet spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowds said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, this morning, the first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of a new church year, I have an important announcement for you. Your king is coming. Yes, he is. He's coming, but he's not just another earthly ruler who's going to come just for a while. I am announcing to you that Jesus Christ, true, the true and only king of the world and of all creation, the king of your life, is coming. 
Now maybe you're thinking, oh, come on now, that's old news. I mean, after all, God has come. He came at Bethlehem when he was born of Mary, and he, and he, he lived his life, and he died, and he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. Tell us something we don't know. Well, yes, we do know that long before Jesus was born, long before Jesus was welcomed into Jerusalem as the son of David, the prophet Zechariah had given his announcement to Israel of that day, his advance notice. And he tells them, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And yes, we, we heard in our gospel lesson this morning that, as we know, Jesus fulfilled the promise of Zechariah as he entered Jerusalem on the donkey that day. But let's remember, too, that this same Jesus who entered Jerusalem continues to come to us today and will come one day in glory on the last day. We need not become frightened at this announcement. We need not panic. But what we do need to do is to stop and think and, and, and settle it in our minds and in our hearts how shall we greet him when he comes? How shall we welcome him aright? <clears throat> well, let's look back at the people of Jerusalem and, and, and uh, how did they recognize Jesus as their king? Not by elegant clothing and, and a grand white horse, which would be fitting for a king. But they trusted the promise given by the prophet of God that your king is coming, humble and mounted on a donkey. The coming king that they and we so desperately need is not an arrogant tyrant who will be with us for a while, ruin our lives, and then move on. But a humble servant is what we need. And it was this humble servant who entered Jerusalem as Solomon had entered so long ago when he succeeded David, riding on a lowly donkey. Christ is the humble king that the world needed then, and he is the Christ that the world so desperately needs now. The Christ who reverses this pattern of simple, sinful selfishness through humble service by dying a humility, humiliating death naked on the cross in the place of every sinner. Yes, your king is coming. How do we recognize Jesus coming in our day and age? As in the first century, so also in the 21st century, our king is not recognized with the elegant clothing or this wonderful white horse that he might be riding. But Jesus c continues to come as the humble king who serves rather than being served. As we look back over the church year, we, we may recall things that happened that we wish hadn't happened, and we might even want to erase that memory from our minds. We are ready, and we need a, a clean slate. We need a new beginning. We want to start all over again. And so it is that your king comes to you clothed in the humble words of forgiveness, he comes clothed in the common water of holy baptism, water understood with the word of God. 
He comes in the invocation of the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to assure you that you will always be his children no matter what happened last year. And he comes clothed in the lowly bread and wine which are his very body and blood. He feeds you with, with life that lasts forever. He comes as the king that we need with the forgiveness of sins. He comes with saving grace upon grace. Jerusalem welcomed their king. They gathered together and, and spread their garments on the road. Some of them spread branches on the road. And they shouted, Hosanna, 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 son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That little word, Hosanna, really says it all. Hosanna, it means save us, we pray. The people welcome their king as the only one who can save them from their sinful ways. And they welcome him as the one who comes in the name of the Lord because he not only not only is he representing the Lord, but he is the Lord himself, the very Lord of whom King David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. Christ is your shepherd king, willing to lay down his life for you, the sheep of his hand. How will we welcome Jesus as he comes to us in the new church year? Yes, and and again, on the last day, which may happen very well in this new church year. We will welcome him like his faithful people of the Jerusalem of old welcomed him. We will welcome him as our Savior. The Hosanna and the blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord are both from Psalm 118. And it is the, the central part of the Sanctus in our Holy Communion setting. Remember, blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, our humble King, comes to us, and we citizens of the New Jerusalem welcome him. And we shout our hosannas, knowing that Jesus whose body we eat and whose blood we drink in holy communion with him, he is our Savior and Lord who has and continues to serve us with exactly what we need, forgiveness and life and salvation. Your king is coming, and that's, just, that's not just old news. I know we've heard it before, but it continues to be fresh good news good news, it was good news when Jesus entered Jerusalem to die for our sins. It was good news on the day that you were baptized and, and Jesus began a good work in you which he will be, bring to completion on that last day. And it is good news these days as you receive your king's perfect righteousness at the altar, receiving and consuming his body and blood. It will be good news throughout this new year as your king continues to come humbly to be truly present with his gifts of life and grace. And yes, it'll be good news when on the last day we will behold our king no longer coming in humility as he did in, in Bethlehem so long ago but he will come in radiant glory as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You know, Advent is a wonderful season for spiritual growth and, and preparation and refreshment. The streets where your King comes to you, humbly serving you, are the daily devotions that you read and then share with your family and, and friends. The streets upon which your king comes to you are the additional midweek Advent services that we will have together. There are four of them this year. 
He will come to you in our Sunday morning service. He will come to you humbly in Holy Communion. This church year is a very special one in which to celebrate his coming because this is the year in which we celebrate the 500th anniversary of the Lutheran Reformation. It's a celebration of 500 years of our King coming to us in his word and his sacraments, setting us free and, 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 and setting the word of God free from the chains of Rome and preserved for our good by the historic Reformation. So welcome him. Sing your hosannas and pray with Martin Luther that ancient cradle song. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, prepare a bed soft, undefiled, a quiet chamber set apart for you to dwell within my heart. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.